Hello everybody, this is Karmakil the Cat, and welcome to your 16th Lua tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going over the second standard library in Lua, the table library. So this is going to be a slightly longer tutorial than the math library tutorial. That was quick, so this will probably just come out a day after the math library tutorial. So let's get started. The first function we're going to go over is the table.insert and table.remove functions. So to demonstrate what these functions do, let's create a table. Sorry, my dog's barking. So we'll just put 10, 20, and 30 in the table. My dog is still barking. And then we'll just create a for loop to print out all the values in the table. Oh, it's a zero, not a O. Oh. So then we just print k comma v and end. Uh, if you didn't know that you could do this, you can just put a whole for loop on a line like this. You don't need to separate it into multiple lines if you just have one small statement like this. This just looks a bit cleaner. So if we save this and we go into our file and run it, I needed uh, io.read. Now if we save it, then it should work. So we get 1, 2, 3, and 10, 20, 30. So now let's call our table.insert function. So we'll say table.insert, and we'll say t, the first parameter is the table that you want the value to be inserted in. The second parameter is the index that you want it to be inserted at, so we want it to be put into the first position, and then the value we'll say is 40. So those are the three, three parameters, the table, the index, and the value. So let's save this, and we'll run it again. Now we get 40, 10, 20, 30. And we can change the index, so we put it at 2, then we have 10, 40, 20, 30, and so on. And also, if you don't include the index, then if we run it, it will just put it in last. So 10, 20, 30, 40. So that's useful if you just want to insert the value at the last position. There are easier ways of doing that, though. So the opposite of that function is the table.remove function. So this takes the same parameters, table, index, and actually I think that's all it takes. So now if we run this, oh, I closed the folder by accident. Then we just get 2030. So we've removed the first value in the table. We can also remove the second value in the table. 1030. And then again, if we remove the index parameter, oh, it wants me to buy a program. I don't want to. Then it will just remove the last value. So the next function we'll go over is table.sort. So we can get rid of this. And let's try reordering these values a little. So we'll say this is 20, uh, this is 10, and this is 30. So by default, if we run this, it says 30, 10, 20. But we can use table.sort to change the order. So we can say table.sort. And for now, let's just give it one parameter, the table we want to sort. And if we save this, we get 10, 20, 30. So by default, table.sort just takes the table and then orders it for, um, from least to greatest. I'm not sure what it does if the table doesn't contain all numbers with this. Let's try. Or let's put it in the middle. So let's see what happens. I've never tried this before. So now if we save this, where will it be? It gets mad. So by default, table.sort only works with numbers, I think. Not sure whether there's a comma here. 
But we can also input a function that tells table.sort how to sort the table. So we say function, oops, it's an anonymous function, and it has to have two parameters, we'll call it x and y. And in the body of the function, we're just going to recreate the default table.sort function. So the function is only going to be one line. We just return x is less than y. So if x is less than y, then it will return true. Input x before y. And if x is greater than y, it will return false. Input x after y in the table. So it's doing the exact same thing as uh, the default function. And I close the folder again. Alright, so let's run it, and we get 10, 20, 30, just like when we were using the default function. But just to prove, I guess, that table.sort is actually using this function, let's reverse the order. So if we save this and run it, we get 30, 20, 10. So that's how you create a function for table.sort. It has to have two parameters, and it has to return true if the first parameter should be placed before the second parameter, and it has to return false if the second parameter should be placed before the first parameter. So those are just the basic guidelines for creating a function in table.sort. So the last function in the table library is table.concat. And what this function does is it takes all of the values in the table and concatenates them together. So let's change our table a bit. Whoa. We'll one value say hello, and the other one say world. And then we can also get rid of this. And then we can just print table.concat and we give it t as a parameter. So if we save this and we run it, we get hello world. But you can see there's no spaces here, so we can fix that by putting in the optional second parameter. And this is just a string that it puts between each string that it concatenates in the table. So we save this, run it, and we get hello world with spaces. There are also optional third and fourth parameters. The third one is the index on the t in the table that you want to start concatenating at, and the fourth would be the index in the table that you want to stop concatenating at. So that's all the functions in the table library, so that's the end of this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I think we're either going to go over the IO library or the string library. So see you in the next tutorial.